hey, let's start creating a predictable dungeon without creating a railroad. Now, in this video, I'm going to discuss my experiences and methods for designing a dungeon adventure. Now, this is the third video of this series on adventure design that I'm doing. And I'm going to go ahead and have a link to the full playlist down in the description below. So, in this video, third, second, third, the first one was the introduction, first one was on creating a villain, this one's on no railroads. So in this video, we're going to be creating a campaign playlist. So, in this video, I'll be discussing how to quickly develop an adventure plot for your campaign using the video that we created in the, in the last video. So, just like in creating a villain, at most, I would write a paragraph here. You want to create a small, confined sandbox for the players to move around in. You don't want to give them too many choices or options, but whatever you do, don't limit player choices. Now, first thing to remember, you are not writing a novel or short story. You are writing an open-ended framework for people to interact with. You are writing the skeleton of the game. You're not even writing a zombie. You're writing a skeleton. So, it's easy to think of your main villain and their henchmen and try to steer the story. Don't do this. It removes your player's free will and, quite frankly, the people playing those characters are going to not want to play. The second thing to remember is an echo of the first thing. You are not writing a computer game either, so don't expect your players to pick up on your clues and go in the right direction. You know, what seems obvious to you, it's not going to be obvious to the players. I have found that the less I plan, the better it often is. So. I try to be flexible and ready to change based on what the players do. Players, players often surprise me, and they do things that I just wasn't expecting. I've learned to roll with it. You know, I make necessary changes on the fly. They suddenly decided to head up river instead of down river. Then, you know, either pull I pull out villain number two, or I just pick up villain number one and move them whichever is more appropriate and makes the most sense. Uh, the location of things in your world only solidify into position once the players visit them. Until then, keep it hazy in your own planning. Even my maps are a bit vague at this point. I could be using an established setting. I might have several small villages or places that aren't on the big maps. Even if I'm taking a plot directly from a published module, I still look for areas where things are open-ended, and I tend to stick with those. So, regarding random encounters, I either don't do them, or I have some scenarios ready to go, including whatever monster stats I might need. Of course, sometimes I do get surprised by the players, but not too often. How much planning do you usually do when you are running an adventure? Have you ever tried to go minimalist and see how it works for you? I would love to learn what everybody else is doing too. But as for me, what I like to do is create a series of events that will occur if the players were to do nothing. Now this is a very short bullet list without dates or anything else. An example might look like, oh, let's say, the villain Galar's followers. Uh, Keith the villain decides to destroy some magic crystal that is important to one or more of the PCs that is tied to the backstory or histories. Uh, Keith will send a small recon group to find it. Unless the PCs stop them, the recon group will report back. So that was what would happen if PCs do nothing. And this might be where we open up the adventure. The PCs would be unaware of the recon group, but through the course of the adventure would find out who they were and what they were up to. I would not plan anything further until I knew what the PCs did and what they said their plans were going to be in for the next game. So as for starting the adventure, if your PCs have backstories, I would plan the, store, the start around that. For example, maybe one of them works as a guard that the recon group will encounter, or if nothing else, they overhear some plans in a tavern. There's always the tavern angle. They may skirmish with the recon group a couple of times. They might even get hired by the recon group to help with part of the mission. I know that twist there. Or, you know, they just might decide to hop on a carriage and go to the next kingdom. 
completely unaware that the evil villain has plans to destroy all of the magic crystals in existence for whatever reason makes sense to the villain. Perhaps the most important thing when starting an adventure and when running it is not to abuse the DM fiat or rule zero. Players don't like being herded or pushed in a particular direction. If they head in a direction you aren't expecting, then pull out your list of random encounters. That's why you have it. I would love a comment down below on some of the ways that you start a new campaign. What makes them interesting? What worked? You know, and what didn't work? That's important too. Uh, the next video in the series will come out next week, or if you are watching in the future, then there's going to be a link down in the description below. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.